Yes, you know, like um, a lot of people are, are wondering, like from a competitive point of view, what's your competitive advantage from your competitors, say uh, um, the other listed company in Malaysia, right? Like for instance, Hexstar or something like that. Um, right. what, what, yeah. Okay, uh, competitive advantage. Uh, as we mentioned in the slides a few times, the key competitive advantage or not only has, I mean, generally on uh, compared to a lot of other players in the region is that we are the only synth uh, molecule synthesizer in the region for herbicides. So th that's a huge advantage because in our manufacturing uh, field uh, of herbicide, the margin is much higher for manufacturer compared to any formulators. Formulators, by formulators, I mean, uh, uh, the players are usually the, the the industrial player that will they will buy the active ingredient from China or elsewhere in the world to the mixing. We are also a formulator, so we formulate in four tank. Uh, we are our revenue in terms of formulation is much smaller compared to our active ingredient. So our competitive advantage is that we are synthesizer, the only synthesizer here, and also the product that we're involved in. For example, MSMA, there are only two producer in the world. So this is very important competitive advantage because not easy for other people to come in due to registration requirement. For Dyron, we are there are only six to seven players in the world. And for Monex, for example, we are the only player in the world. And for some of the timber preservative product, we are like there are about three to four players. And for example, uh, a timber preservative product, we command 45% of the world market share. So not easy for other people to come in because of the complication of stepping out of France and the registration process. So these are our key competitive advantage compared to a lot a lot of other players. Now, you mentioned Hexa. Hexa is a well-respected player in Malaysia, and Hexa is very strong in the downstream distribution in the region. So I think everybody has got their own competitive advantage. For us, we remain very strong in the core competency of producing this active ingredient. So that remains our key competitive advantage. Yeah. OK, um, thanks, uh, Mr. Lee. Um, mm -hmm. I think we would like to touch a little bit about your factory expansion. Let me just yeah. ask a question one second. Huh? Uh, yes, yeah. so I think that's a good question. So, um, you know, can you just update us? Um, sorry. So I think um, a lot of people are wondering also that um, from the presentation slides from Andrew just now, you know, um, both of your factories are actually not at 100% uh, utilization. And therefore, like, why would you like to expand, right? Um, is this kind of like um, on the backdrop of a strong demand of your products? Right, so that's that's perhaps question number number one, and basically over here it's it's saying like, can your sales team cope with the expansion um, when it's when it's up and running? Uh, I certainly hope so. <laughs> okay, now uh, fifty percent and seventy percent uh, relates to our current production of the existing uh, active ingredient and also our existing formulation plant. All these are relating to our existing product, only four AIs. Our new extension in uh, Pop Clan Factory is to cater for the new active ingredients. So basically, these are two mutually exclusive, right? So 70%, why are we not serving at the 100%? Now, in our industry, it's very important. In any given year, assuming uh, if there is a huge surge in demand for the pesticide, uh, so if, uh, it is important that we keep some reserve uh, uh, capacity to cater for the sudden surge in the requirement in certain given years. For example, in 2013, when sugar price was very high, uh, there was a huge demand that uh, we were producing about 80% and subsequently, even at 100% level, we cannot, we couldn't, we were not able to supply the MSMA to the Brazilian market. So then we lost the opportunity. So it's always important in our industry uh, relating to the agricultural uh, support for the administration of pesticide, it's important that we keep certain reserve margin. It's like electricity for Tanaka. They will always keep a 20% to 30% reserve margin uh, just in case there's a shutdown or there is a blackout from certain power plant in Malaysia. So we cannot go for 100% uh, capacity. I know in Malaysia now, a lot of uh, top, a lot of glove factory are going for 120%. Uh, but for our industry, it's very difficult because certain product like uh, MSMA, there are only two producer in the world. If there is a bumper year, good year coming along, and we cannot produce that year, 
it will be forever gone because uh, the two years may never repeat the following year. So hence the reason for the 70% for our active ingredient. We're quite comfortable with the reserve margin. The 50% is applicable to our formulation plant. So formulation usually sometimes it goes 70%, sometimes 50%. For the same reason, we are looking at keeping at 70% 70, 70 uh, level. Yeah. So that's the reason for this. And the new factory uh, to cater for the new active ingredient, certainly I certainly hope that our sales team can cook because uh, technically these new active ingredients are the request are at the request of the customers from Brazil or from worldwide. Uh, for one reason, they do not want to depend fully on China. Now, China used to be the uh, is still the uh, biggest manufacturing producer for a lot of active ingredients, but overly depend on China. Uh, in the last few years, SBS has taught us that uh, overly dependent may have an issue when they have a policy changes or if they got big accident, uh, big explosion in the plant and all that, the entire the province will shut down. So due to that, I think uh, that's our competitive advantage really. Uh, it's the customers who ask us to grow, the uh, to, to manufacture the new molecule instead of us building it and go and ask customers to buy. So that is a very important part of our growing, uh, our core expansion plan. So, so you would say that you have um, quite a good order visibility on your new active ingredients? Uh, generally, yes. Uh, but of course, uh, we have to produce to the quality they wanted. Uh, it is not a simple process. To synthesize the molecule, it is a complicated chemical reaction process. So always for new molecules, new active ingredient, it will take a while for the team to get adjusted to it. So the challenge is more on the production part. It is not so much of the marketing part. Because market, they're always looking for diversification from China since three years ago. So actually, uh, when we uh, announced this new plan to do these three or four molecules, a lot of our customers, they're quite uh, happy with this option that they're able to source it outside China. Mm. Um, OK, I, I guess, yeah, I'm also seeing a lot of questions um, for people wanting to understand more about your raw materials, like, you know, mm -hmm. What are your raw materials in Ancom Crop Care that you're getting the supply from China? And how, um, so you mentioned something to do with how you're trying to be uh, less reliant on China due to some sort of like um, inconsistencies from your China supplier, right? Um, yeah. So, and, and, and I think you mentioned also how you guys are trying to develop your own formula um, for the raw material. So I guess the, the question is, do you guys have the technical capacity and capability to do it? Well, certain chemical intermediate, unfortunately for Malaysia, uh, we do not have this capability because in order to produce a lot of chem intermediate chemicals that is used. Now, all these chemicals are basically a derivative of petrochemical product or the mineral. Uh, uh, minerals uh, from 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 uh, every part, uh, mostly from China because China has got a huge mineral uh, uh, mining activities. So all these form the basis of the chemical uh, uh, raw material. And it's important uh, when all these chemical plants do this product, they have got the economies of skills, and that's the reason why China has got a huge one. Now uh, for us, uh, when we do this product, we are looking at getting the support of intermediate from China. Uh, not everything we can do it here, but apart from China, now we are also sourcing from India, from Morocco, from certain places in Namibia, from all the mining activities place. So uh, we are diversifying certain uh, minerals and certain uh, 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 chemicals from uh, China, but not everything we can diversify away from China. That, that, that's the reality. So in Malaysia, to do the chemical intermediate is very difficult because we do not have a lot of chemical plants uh, surrounding uh, Malaysia region. So that is, unfort uh, is unfortunately the case. But going forward, I mean, generally everybody is practicing the diversification of China. So uh, 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 generally, I think from the last three years, there has been a lot of diversification uh, uh, activities uh, that took place with a lot of uh, formulators and a lot of industrial players in, in this region. Everybody is doing the same thing to reduce the dependence there. Yeah. And also over the years, I think China, in terms of the land cost, because a lot of all these uh, plants are all at the eastern coast of China. So the labor cost, uh, compared to 20 years ago, China has got the lowest labor cost in the region. But at today's uh, uh, rate, China is actually having higher uh, utility, higher uh, labor and higher land cost compared to Southeast Asia. Hence, you will see uh, a lot of uh, relocation of a lot of Chinese factories by the MNC to this Southeast Asian region. Vietnam, Indonesia, 
Thailand, uh, Myanmar, that, I mean, Myanmar due to the recent uh, COVID cut, so it's very difficult. But in the region, there are a lot of uh, FDI follow, uh, flowing into this region due to the less competitive state of China, uh, given, given the growth in the past uh, 20 years. Mm. Okay. Um, I think there's a question here, Mr. Lee. Um, uh, they want to find out about your R&D team and perhaps your R&D expenses. Okay. Uh, in the US, a lot of MNCs uh, 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 allocate about 3 to 4% for R&D. In our case, uh, it is uh, much lesser. Uh, now, uh, in our industry, to produce one new molecule, uh, they, it, it involves a lot of scientists. There's a huge cost, uh, cost attached to the new molecule, a new active ingredient. So our research team, generally, we do a lot of cocktail, a lot of mixing, uh, and uh, do the new product through the mixing. But to produce the new molecule, uh, a totally new molecule, patented molecule, we are not capable of doing that. But once all these molecules become uh, uh, off patent, uh, I think uh, 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 then there are opportunities for other players to come in, including us, and through our uh, economies of scale and also our specific demand from client, uh, then we do this uh, uh, a bit of R&D for the new product with the help and collaboration, technical collaboration from mostly China engineer. So for R&D, uh, we are not like those uh, big companies like Monsanto, Dow, Dupont, that may uh, uh, BSF, uh, Sumitomo, all those companies have got hundreds of scientists doing the new molecule, which Malaysian company or for the matter, Southeast Asian companies are not capable of doing. But what we do is when certain products become off patent and because of certain uh, 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 competitive advantage we have, we choose to do uh, uh, at this region. Uh, that's what we do usually. So our staff, uh, R and D, maybe uh, lab skills. I think we got about twenty people uh, like that. So, uh, and but this is important competitive advantage because uh, in order to synthesize new molecules for the new player in this region to come in, they need to set up the lab, the equipment, the experience from the manufacturing, the experience from the production, and also all the necessary. Uh, 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 technical requirement uh, or that that requires a lot long years of uh, experience so it's not easy to become a synthesizer or molecule generally speaking yeah. okay Mithik, you got any questions uh, on Ancom crop care anymore um how's the progress uh, of the new factory because i forgot has it been delayed <laughs> last year i forgot <laughs> when the target completion okay uh, as per the presentation just now, we're supposed to complete it by mid this year based on last year's plan. But during the pandemic, construction sector, I think everything closed down. When we apply to the, uh, for two reasons, the delay was attributable to two reasons. One is, I think a lot of government office also closed down or minimize, uh, uh, cut short the uh, working hours. So for us to submit uh, the plan and all that, I think that there's been corresponding delay in terms of approving the plan. And secondly, the plant also requires the input and participation from, uh, from, uh, from engineers from China. So engineers from China still, I think, remotely through the FP is a bit difficult because they need to observe the start and all that. So uh, we are having a bit of delay uh, attributable mainly to these two reasons. So now the new targeted date to complete uh, uh, the construction of the factories will be either September or, or December in, in between this period. And after we finish, we need to uh, install the equipment for the new product. So that is likely to take place maybe beginning of next year. So all these are due to the, uh, mostly due to the pandemic because uh, construction activities are, are reduced uh, significantly and also the approval process is taking longer than expected. So otherwise, end of this year, and we hope to be able to produce uh, by beginning first quarter next year. The uh, target, so the max capacity will be about, uh, I don't know how many tons, but I know in terms of number revenue, it's about 100 million, right? 4,000. 4,000 metric tons, yeah. yeah. Now, interesting part about this new molecule is this. Uh, as we go along, uh, whatever we produce, the MSMA, Dairon, those are, those are the old active ingredients, or in industry, we keep them calling it molecules. Uh, going forward, the new uh, active ingredients, the prices per unit, uh, per kilo is on the rise. For example, at the moment we sell uh, MSMA at about uh, three thousand plus per uh, uh, ton, uh, uh, three thousand plus USD per ton. Dairo is about now is about four thousand plus per ton. Uh, Monex is about four thousand per ton. Uh, uh, but the new, let's say B, 
I got the page right uh, just now. There's a page uh, three uh, category B. The first product we have launched uh, maybe the quarter this year. The per unit uh, per ton is about twelve thousand USD. So uh, the T is about eighteen thousand USD. So generally, all these new product will have four to five times the price of the old active ingredient because uh, the, the AI is getting better and better uh, using uh, is getting higher and higher concentrate due to technology so uh, uh, that's why uh, all this is on the rise so that will contribute significantly to the growth of our future revenue if it comes on board uh, generally it's like that so when it's fully utilized you expect the new factory to bring in about 100 million revenue right this i see the projection well, uh well without going too detailed generally speaking four molecules gave us close to uh, uh, uh together with the formulation gave us uh, historically uh, last year's auditor result close to 300 million revenue eight molecules the general rule is in the beginning period is lesser volume but the per unit price is higher so uh, we hope to be able to double it in 24 to 36 months in terms of revenue generally speaking we hope to be able to depending on the market condition and also depending on our ability to do the technology fast, to do the production uh, acceptable to the client fast. But generally, with eight molecules, the eight active ingredients, it, sh it generally should double compared to the current level. Yeah. The entire crop care revenue? Yeah, crop care division, yes. Uh, crop care division. Of course, maybe profit margin may change a bit, like you said, new one, maybe. Right. It will be on a gradual rise. Uh, it's impossible to achieve a first round uh, beginning at a higher margin, but generally, uh, over time, the margin will increase and also the volume will increase. That's the general trend. So we hope to be able to achieve good economies of skills in 30 months. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, maybe um, just one last question, you know, with regards to Ncom Crop Care, right? Um, I think there are some questions here. Um, what would you? What would your strategy be for twenty twenty one for Encom Crop Care, and what are the challenges in twenty twenty one? Because I think, um, as you mentioned just now, um, Encom Crop Care is very, very kind of like um, it's very sensitive to natural disaster, right? Which seem mm. like uh, it's getting more and more regular these days <laughs> due to like global warming and things like that. Okay. Okay. It's a fair question. Okay, answer your first question first. What are the challenges and what are the plans for 2021 or 2022? Uh, our financial year ends <clears throat> year ends May 31st to uh, every year, uh, from June to May. So now by March, I think we are finishing uh, financial year 2021 in two months time, generally speaking. And our new financial year will start in June. Uh, this year, generally, we are seeing recovery. We hope the recovery will continue. And this year, there aren't any, uh, there are not, there aren't any natural disaster, too much of it. Uh, so uh, I think we are experiencing uh, generally a good year. So we hope to be able to continue the good trend. The challenges this year in particular is relating to our distribution and freight cost. It's applicable to a lot of players in the industry. Uh, so uh, for January, February, March, April, we are experiencing, uh, no, April at the moment is still high. Uh, the highest went, like for example, the distribution cost is about 400%. Uh, uh, by March, I think it's still at 300%. We hope this distribution cost, this freight cost will resume back to the normal level uh, going forward, uh, uh, maybe uh, close to the original uh, uh, level uh, by May. So that would be the challenges that we hope to be able to maintain. And for generally, uh, for the group, uh, we hope the rise in prices uh, will not dip because when, they, when there's a dip in prices, that will be the other way uh, in terms of the benefit, in, in terms of uh, recognizing the, the, the business opportunities. So uh, that's a general uh, uh, trend, a general uh, outlook in 2021 and also the challenges. Now, uh, coming to the question on the natural disaster uh, due to global warming, yes, every time when there's an L9, L, L9, 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 uh, it is not good because uh, it will cause floods, it will cause extreme drought in certain places. So in our industry, as we mentioned, flood is no good, bushfire is no good, drought is no good. So uh, uh, generally with global warming, all these are, are, are part of the uh, uh, natural phenomenon that we see in, in, in the world, uh, world of plantation. Uh, these, are, these are the common challenges we face. 
Uh, however, generally speaking, whatever it is, if this year you have a bad year, next year should have a good year because everything will have to be recovered. Because we are dealing with food industries, the shortage of the current year should be sufficed by the surplus or additional demand in the following year. Or extreme high supply uh, 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 this year will lead to lower demand. But what we do is over time, if you plot the graph uh, over the projected uh, time of uh, tenure of 10 years, generally when you average it out, uh, the basic demand will always be there. So the ups and downs usually should not exceed 20% generally speaking. Uh, it's not like, uh, like a pandemic. Uh, sensitive to the pandemic will be the hotel, the F&B, the airline industry, all these will be affected at 80-90%. In our industry, in every chemical generally, uh, maximum fluctuation is perhaps 20% uh, generally speaking. So uh, with a natural disaster one year, should be recovered or compensated by the following years uh, uh, in terms of demand supply. Yeah. So that's the general trend of the industry. Yeah.